my buddy Tim over there in the corner. Hey, hey. You know, kind of where he normally is. Uh, yeah, buddy. Tonight we'd like to welcome Niagara Falls City Councilman Ken oh, Tompkins, the good friend of mine. The pirate of city. Oh. Yarg. <laughs> so when we're done today, will you guys give me my dog back? So quit blackmailing me for this. No, well, no, no. no. It is, the Yulin Festival is coming up, Kenny. I don't know if we can do that. Uh, I'm just Tim, worried about them Chinese restaurants. Tim, Tim said, yeah, Tim said that we were going after Remy next. Um, Uh-oh. I don't know how Terry feels about that, but Walter's already gone. I don't Walter, know. Walter is being held for hostage. We got ransom for him. We got, yeah, he's worth it, too, that little flower eater. Oh, he's you know, a trip. You, you should have trip. seen that little boy when we first picked him up. I went with Ken to, to go pick him up in Ohio, and I'll tell you what, he wasn't no bigger than the palm of your hand. And it was funny to watch him when we stopped along the way so that he could do his deal, and uh, that dog was prancing like a reindeer. Oh, they're, he, his they're legs adorable were too little small. dogs. His four legs pounds. Too small. Yeah. Only four pounds when we got <laughs> him. Me and Melissa were talking. Well, the thing about the small dogs is they, they got a lot of heart for being really small oh. dogs. Like well, they, the reason I fell in love with the pugs, it is a, the, the largest of the toy breed has a lot of spirit and you yeah, keep it in a small space. They do. And, and they, I mean, I've seen, my, my aunt has a dog that's kind of like uh, Chris's dog. It's like a um, Jack Russell, Jack Wawa type dog. And that dog is meaner than the pit bull that we have. Oh, most yeah. rat terrier type dogs that I've seen have a little bit of attitude. Maybe it's oh, yeah. that uh, small person mentality. Yeah, the Napoleon complex. Yeah. We're being watched. Uh, we're being watched, uh, fellas. Where somebody says, "Hey, now," and I don't think we need to explain that it's uh, the wife of a pirate that's sitting here <laughs> in the studio. So. Well, hello, Miss Tompkins. Let's. Uh, we need to make sure we all wish her a happy birthday. Yeah, her birthday was, right. birthday was yesterday. Her birthday yeah. was yesterday. Twenty nine years old with postage again. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping she had a good birthday. It had to be good because I wasn't around, so she got a break from me for once, which was probably well deserved. But uh, yeah, it was. I don't know. I seen you do like a thumbs up picture. I I said, why the hell would he put his own picture up there for her birthday? (laughs) That's Tim. That's just yeah. That that, it made sense after we started talking back and forth. But yeah, it was yesterday. She was turned what thirty one, thirty two. Like Actually, posters. she's a couple years older than me, so it makes her like 61. Ooh, wow. Uh-oh. Oh, oh shit. Shit. You know, the couch is empty at my house, buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll make you breakfast No, you got, you got your sister in town. <laughs> she's sleeping trouble. upstairs in the extra bedroom, so I'll make you breakfast in the morning when I wake you up now. <laughs> Niagara Vox does not support or agree with the, the opinion the, the just thoughts, made. The opinions expressed in this podcast. <laughs> um. So... We wrote down a couple of things. We went back and forth, obviously. Uh, is there anything you could tell us about the Summerfest lineup? Have you got that? We don't have. Uh, right now, we have three of the band, three of the five that we're going to play. It's uh, Tedesco Knows Best is a young band that's coming up, and they're really taking off. Mm-hmm. So we brought them, and we always have the Fabulous USA band. They're coming in. And the other one, uh, it's an older band that took a little break, and now they're back. They're called uh, Even Odds. So uh, I think that's going to be rocking. We're talking to a couple others, uh, but uh, we have some choices out there. We just haven't decided which way we're going yet. Well, and it's, it's awesome. And it's also an awesome cause that, you know, all goes towards the, the firefighters. Every toy penny of it goes to the firefighters toy fund. Every, all the money raised, we raise donations to pay for the cost of the event. And then every penny as everyone comes through the gate, whatever spent in the thing, all goes to the charity. Yeah. And that's definitely something that's always helpful. I know last year that, I don't think they did anything last year. Well, we actually, uh, with the help of uh, Steve Barnes and uh, the Western New York uh, Cruise Group, we um, we actually raised about seven thousand dollars. Yes, I do remember that. You know, we got lucky. We had a beautiful cruise. Went down to Youngstown into uh, Alcott. It was a nice time as far as that. Everybody kind of just got together because nobody wanted to let the cause go. Yeah, yeah, and it's we had to it, modify the plans a little bit too. Yeah, I remember. I remember the cruise. Now that I think about it, you guys rode all all the way down there. And, and you never that's something that you don't want to let go because it affects children it affects a lot more than know. children they do senior sit they they help everybody and anybody yeah. there's clothing now it started out it's almost nine it's 98 years old i believe this year it started out that people would bring toys in or firemen would find toys and they'd fix them at the fire hall mm. and give them to the neighborhood children but it's grown to there. Now it's not only toys and gifts, but it's clothes, it's food, it's for the senior citizens. Anything people need to help. You know, they do, they do the best they can. They do a hell of a job at it. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was a kid that they were still, they were doing it way back when. And obviously, they were well, doing it Well, even you're not that old. Even when you were a kid, probably. Yeah, well, 
Even Terry when she was young. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Back in the Flintstones' actual days, I guess. Now, was... Kenny, Kenny had to parallel park a dinosaur to get his driver's license, he told me, so Amen you got to be that. careful. Amen on that. <laughs> well, so what else you got going on there, Mr. Tompkins? Not much. Uh, I'm going to be off for a week. Got a nice little vacation coming up. The council itself is off for the month of August. There's always been a hiatus, I guess, for the month of August. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a chance for everybody to regroup, spend some time with their family. and uh, Get your energy up because when you get back, you guys get started right in on the budget, budget season. That actually, uh, we, although we say we're off for August, but we're not. We're actually going to have prelim budget meetings with some departments and stuff like that in August. Well, so. they said yesterday, the what was it, city controllers, the little bald guy that sits in the front? Not to have you said bald guy, the little bald guy. Uh, Dan Morello. Dan, yeah. Dan is yes. a, a great guy. Um, and a spy, if you, He could be teased if you if watch still going to call him a little bald guy. <laughs> <laughs> if, you follow, if you follow his mm. projections all through COVID, he has been yeah. dead on, I, well, I, scarily good since, on Since I've, I've been paying attention, and you remember when I first started yep. popping up around, um, he, he's always come off with his numbers, and his numbers have always been close to what he said at the end of the day. Anyway. Absolutely, so, which for me, for COVID, which is unprecedented, I mean, it was amazing yeah. for him to be so Almost honest, like his you know? crystal ball was actually working, and he knew what was going to happen. Are you saying maybe he just rubbed his head? Conspiracy theorist. Well, he, he rubbed he rubbed uh, Chris's head, and he was like, <laughs> what do you got going on over here, Chris? <laughs> yeah, they're bad. What do you got going on over here, Chris? <laughs> Dan is one of the nicest <laughs> neighbors <laughs> you'd ever have. He lives around the corner from me. He looks like a nice guy, and Chris looks yeah, like a nice guy. He is a nice very guy. Chris you know, is a nice guy. And that's why I couldn't pick on him when they were doing the, the, uh, their primary or their judge race. You know, I didn't really pick on Chris. The judge race is basically over now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah working, definitely... No, the working family parties did not pick a candidate. Oh. oh. Well, they didn't plan on it anyways if there was a split, and they both got 10, I right. believe. Right, so, so that five. means that there is no one running on that line, so that means um, Ms. Fossil has every line. Well, that means that I'll have to get Janelle in here. Um, oh, we got to get a booster seat. I didn't want. I didn't want. To, like, <laughs> yeah. You do realize that any one of us gets any kind of ticket, we're doing jail time. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I don't plan on getting my driver's license back. We, we better hope. We just better hope that we get her brother because he'll laugh with us. <laughs> <laughs> he might actually pay the fine for us as much as hell she We'll gets set us. up a uh, GoFundMe page. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday there was some. There was a lady that came in. I believe she was from National Grid. Yes. Um, two days ago, by the way. Yeah, two days ago. Today's Friday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday was Thursday, Yes, that's right. Well, I Friday. watched it. I watched it yesterday <laughs> because I didn't. I, I wanted to try to catch the skydive. That, that was kind of funny that the mayor wasn't at a council meeting, but he was at the skydiving event. Priorities. Yeah. Well, you know, you do want to boost the city. Well, I do. I understand that. But at the but same time, when, when, I, when you guys had the meeting, it was specifically said there at the meeting that the two people sitting at the table can answer the questions, and there were still some questions that they couldn't answer. But see, now, if we had they department been, heads at those meetings, the department heads could have actually covered yeah. that. Yeah, well, and that, that's and something that they could take do, on their own. Like we were talking about when we were on our way over here about individuals, even community members, taking their, the incentive on their own yeah. to help out and, and create that reciprocity between a balancing the community aspect and the government aspect. And now, what That's what, the only way we're going to be able to tread water again. What was the, what's the standard procedure when the mayor and the city administrator don't show up at a council meeting? You run them over with a parachuter. <laughs> no, no, they they feel totally comfortable. There's reasons that they can't come for certain things, this and that. But uh, they felt they called me and told me that he didn't think he'd be able to attend, and uh, he felt that we'd be in very good hands with the corporate council and the city controller. No, no and it protocol. wasn't anything that was really. Nothing was really no, and I think that, really I think that we held think, back a couple of questions that we'll just ask at the next meeting. I, I think the only one that was really that was that was not understood as far as going forward on it is the one that Bill had question uh, number twenty, the the enforcement, and yep. I think that was the only thing where it just kind of seemed like when it got to that, everybody was like, uh, uh yeah, let's, uh, and he was like, well, we'll this have to is, circle back. He and then he <laughs> broke it down and from. This is what the state was saying last year. Right. Mm-hmm. This is we're just trying to be in accordance with this. And it's just a matter of solidifying so everybody throughout the state is on the same thing yep. for your fire code. A lot yep. of people come up and they speak. There were two speakers on that. And there everybody keeps trying to tie it into short term rentals. I don't even it, know if you can call them speaker. I'm well, sorry, I didn't it it <laughs> but it doesn't deal with short term rentals and they don't understand. They're one track minds and that's yeah. that's not well, it's not well, good it, for government. And it, 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 it's just because people 
read to react and not to understand. And that's exactly what happened. They both came in. I, I remember you stopping one of them and saying, what is, what is this? Is this an agenda item? And he was like, yeah, yeah, it's number 20. And then went off on something that was completely different than what the agenda <laughs> item was. And you know, you give them a little bit of leeway. What you, <coughs> yeah. You know, as long as they're not going, you know, way overboard. Well, and, and the one guy, and it was, I believe it was the same individual they're referencing, made a comment about, the one that was making a comment about he was be, being accosted with yes. um, a baseball bat or whatever. No, she, uh, yeah, hey, that she was, saw that video. That was, that was, the, lead pipe. that was, uh, yeah, the, yeah I, I, I heard the call come across the scanner, but here's my thing, is that if you own an STR in that area and you're advocating, like the next guy was talking about, well, we should be able to have one on 19th. No, you should not be able to have one on 19th Street. <laughs> That's not even good business. And it, it, well, you may have the ability to have one on Nineteenth Street, yeah. but you have to think of whether you want one or not. Well, and, and, and that's a that's, that's a business decision. That that well, exactly. no, 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 yeah, no. That's it's, your that's your business plan. No, 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 that's not just a business decision. That comes down to safety as well, Wait, because and it does. these people are coming from out of town, and you plop them down. In well, in a bad neighborhood, and they're unsuspecting of this, thinking they're coming to Disney World. It really comes to how they advertise the place, too. I well, mean, and, you know, if you you can make just about anything look good, depending on the camera angles right, you take. Oh, yeah. That look was at, another thing that he even mentioned guy. on his own. <laughs> he said something to the effects of, you know, that the lady called me and told me that I, she wanted her money back, that she wasn't staying here, and the pictures were false advertising. That's his fault. You didn't go take exactly. pictures for him and, and advertise his that's business. That's one of the reasons for the zone. Yeah. You're going to take an area that's very blighted, and you're going to get people. There are four state and federal programs targeted the area that we want to zone in. You have that money coming in. You have private investors coming in. That's a chance to take a blighted neighborhood and turn it around. Mm -hmm. And as it turns around, you're going to create growth. Yeah. People are going to move into that neighborhood. They'll want to be in that neighborhood. You're going to get corner stores. You'll maybe get coffee mm -hmm. shops. You'll get those up. Plus, well, when it they see is the, the supply and demand area to the falls. Yeah, and when they see the supply and demand, then businesses will come back into them areas and, and start to facilitate the needs of them. Them. But the other the other side of that coin too. I'm gonna. I can speak on this one from experience because I live within that area, and I actually kind of like it down there. And I don't want somebody to come in and, and basically try to run me out because well, I live not, It won't area. run you out. All it'll get you to do is you don't want to be the worst property on the street. So hopefully that people that want to stay there will invest in their own property. But some of the people that currently rent downtown now, if those building owners sell all those buildings to these short-term rental operators, now you're yeah. forcing out the renters and that's that want to be downtown, that want to be there. Now they have to move because their owner sold the building, and now it's becoming a short-term rental. Well, well to turn something into a short-term rental is going to cost you, you know, for most people it seems like it costs them between fifty and $100,000. Yeah, it costs them pretty So you pretty. really, I mean, yeah. there's, there's some very strict codes that you have to follow by yeah. that. But some of the people, though, like I said, that are renting downtown now in a – Maybe a substandard, we'll call it a substandard building. We've got some out-of-town landlords that uh, don't Heck, we got some in-town landlords yeah. that don't right. want to keep up on But you've property. got people down there that are living down there because that's what they can afford. They like the area, and it's actually cheap because it's a substandard house. You know, now when that guy gets a phone call, I've gotten a couple myself from my house. Hey, we want to give you a cash offer. The, the owner decides to sell that building, and now that building is not going to be substandard, which is good for the area, good for the neighborhood, but it's not good for those people that live in there that may be all they can afford. Well, now yeah. they're going to be forced to go out and have to, to scrape up an extra two or $300 a month to, to live outside of you know that bubble, that zone, where they may live downtown because they work down there. They may work in the, the hospitality industry, and they want to be there because it's close for them to work. They don't have a vehicle. Now, all of a sudden, because their building was sold, you know, like I said, there's two sides to it. And well, there's, to look gonna, the there is gonna, is there's plenty though. of area that will still be downtown that will not be in the zone that people could move into. Or a third level, they because or, they know the third like, level, they can't live in a third level for a short-term rental. So we can have, you know, renters on a third level. Well, like an A1 there. residential, you, right. you can't. But the, the, is it R1? R1. R1, 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 yeah. I always thought it was A1. I don't know why. <laughs> A1 steak sauce. Um. But yeah, and we we went to extensive. Me and you talked about about STRs and that, my comparison. You see the actual, pluses so. and the minus, but yeah, we have a councilman. It has to be done right. Right, we have a councilman, John Spanbauer. He is 
He does research like no one I've ever he, seen. His desk thorough. has got yeah. you know, books three feet tall. Mm-hmm. He does so much work. If you really look around at short-term rentals, at cities that have done it and had to change it, most all of them have zones. Well, I think they have yeah, zones everyone for a I've reason. Seen. Every every one that I've seen, but and that's why I go Weren't back you to in that. Nashville. That that's it, that's exactly where I was going to right. with the whole they, thing you know. is that we can we can, even as far as tourism goes, we get about on average the same amount as Asheville when it comes to tourists four point nine five million people a year. Asheville, North Carolina. Yes, right. Asheville, North Carolina, and and they started having an STR problem back in the early two thousands. Right across and the just border, now, does it? Well, yeah, and, right across but, the border zone. <clears throat> the thing about Canada, though, that I like is any tourism uh, tourism tourism dollars that they take in, they, they put, put it back, back in the into their tourism, kind of like the Greenway Fund would do. Um, you know, and this will, like the fees and stuff that we're proposing for these short-term business owners, people have to remember. Well, that's commercial. business owner. It is. Yeah, it is commercial. People, uh, some people, even my friend Tim over here, he'll say, well, long-term rental, long-term rental. But a long-term <laughs> rental, a, a long-term <laughs> rental is um, zoned that way from the get-go. Yeah. You know, it's a two-family, a a three-family, whatever, it's zoned that way. When they're coming in for short-term rental, they are coming into the board and they're asking, can I have a special use? Can I change the makeup of this neighborhood and put a business in In the middle middle of a residential neighborhood? And at the same time, a lot of these places, and it was something that was a problem back in um, in 2014 when they were doing the trash fee. uh, The Tompkins tax. Well, no, no, this is back when Chalokian said that we should give everything away for free. Yeah. Um, as far as businesses, and they shouldn't be paying a fee because they're businesses, they're commercial, they're businesses. But Who a lot of these houses, taxes? a lot of these houses aren't what they used to be back in the early 2000s. I know several houses that are listed in, in, in ORS as a one-family home, four bedrooms that have been turned into upstairs, downstairs right. apartments. My house was one yeah. of those. My house is actually listed. You as probably a did it yourself, though. You, no, you I bought there. it as a duplex, and I've mm-hmm. never rented it. It's I've I had kids. I had a house on Twentieth Street that was a legitimate two family. I made it back to a one family because I had so many kids. No, that was the one of the the the, the first. Not the, yeah, the first yeah. one on, uh, as yeah. you're coming up. Yeah, I remember the one that where one. we kept the weed whacking mob. Equipment. Yes, yes, yes. Weed whacker mob equipment. Weed whacker um, mob equipment. This would be a good a good way to go into this next question that I have for you as far as collecting. Um, well, actually, I already started talking about what I wanted to go into. The young lady that came in from National Grid and was talking about the charging stations. Yeah. Um, Great idea. Now, I don't know if, because you, you've pretty much went off of Facebook. Um, I got a petition going around for changing one of the streets to Tesla Street. Now, when I seen her say that about the charging stations popping a bump on Main Street and whatnot, wouldn't there be a way to talk them into maybe even in, in also probably using Greenway funds because it does come from them or National Grid, New York Power Authority? National Grid, I think. National Grid is National Grid. National Grid is National thing. Grid. But getting them charging ports done in, like, historical figures – now, I posted a picture not that long ago. <laughs> that's a, good, you get that's like a unique you, idea. Sure, Frederick absolutely. Douglass, and then like you put your little cord up there. But so what are you saying? We're got basically going to you know, plug into Abe Lincoln's nose? That'll work. We could plug <laughs> into his butt. That'd <laughs> Something be somebody would remember if they come to this. Area. Really charge out his ass. You know? <laughs> you know? But I, I seen a picture. What it was is in Silicon Valley, they have a, a Tesla statue that actually admits oh, a Wi-Fi yes. signal. I saw that. And I was reading about that. Yeah, I thought that that was a pretty cool idea. Maybe get one in a, a charging station every couple of, you know, Well, you know, uh, to take what you're saying, I mean, I don't know about that because there'd probably be some cost in the artistry that you need. Yeah, but, um, definitely. What if we've whatever street that you figured out to be Tesla Lane, if it's like down near the tourist area, why not make that entire street full of charging stations? Well, and that, that's exactly you what, know what I mean. So what, what better than an well, electric avenue? Well, you know? yeah, the, well, the issue with that, though, is you're not just Teslas aren't the only electric vehicles out there. No, so. but well, they're, they're well, planning on for the future is what they're doing. They're yeah. not saying Tesla vehicles. We're talking, what's Tesla do? Right. He didn't but, make vehicles. He did electricity. Right, but yeah. if we may run into some issues with uh, the Chevy Volt. Might well, say, oh, Chevy Volts aren't allowed here because it's I don't, Tesla. Lane. I don't mean, well, you you wouldn't be able to do that anyways because then you would also be advertising Tesla. But it as could a be thing. a corporate sponsorship. Well, it could be, but you could also, well, you could, that's how you could pay for yeah, the actual statues themselves and saying, hey, listen, we want to put these 
Tesla statues out here. But so we got 24 faces of Elon Musk going down uh, Tesla oh. Lane. Well, no, there, there's other people like uh, Nino Nino Tempo. It used to be a singer here. Charles Utter. You know, there, there's uh, no. There's, but yeah, he's talking about sponsorship, and I know he's talking about you're going to get the Tesla Corporation yeah. sponsorship. I mean. Man that runs that thing, I could just see Eli's hey, face all the way down the I, street. I, I well, keep, if he's going to put the cash out to do it, well, let's take his loot and go. I done said it before. I would love it if he would call me at home. <laughs> My number is on the page. Um, we we can work out some kind of a uh, role. Elon, know? if you're listening, please call Sean. He's looking forward to the call. Call. Hey, if you want to sponsor the show, just give me a call, Elon. That'll that'll work. We will work it out. You got to call Peter though. Got to um, see if he comes back from space or not. No, no, I already said it. I don't want him to come back. Just give me a blank <laughs> check and say, here you go. But but going um, further on on that whole, the... the I like that up. we look to our past and use that to bring people in. Yeah, I truly and, do. One of my thoughts has always been to take where the Underground Railroad Museum is, mm-hmm. the other half of the library, we should make our Niagara Falls Museum. Yeah. So that we already have the people that are going there, so they go left into that. They go right into ours, you know. It would be mm-hmm. nice to see it. We have a lot of archives in uh, classic memorabilia at the library. Yes. And the library is not very good with the climate control net. Yeah. The that train so station up. is, you know, state of the art. So I wonder how much of a lift it would be, it should be. to make We're that other set. For. Because well, I, and I don't I th- see people jumping forward to rent that space out. I really think that that library should have been pushed back at the old Carnegie line of area. And then, yes and no. The Carnegie building has its own set of issues. Plus, uh, when they converted it to office space like they did, mm. kind of butchered it. Yeah, yeah. I remember walking in there and trying to figure out what that was going on with that place. Yeah, they Where's the children's it. section at again? Um and it goes. Are you old enough to remember the Carnegie? No, no. Oh, okay. I remember when I was a kid. I do. I mean, I don't. I, I think. I think when I was a kid, I remember. But Earl Bridges Library was always there when I was a kid. I remember. I think going. the li- Earl Bridges was in the seventies. It was what? I think it was in the set late seventies. No, well, I was born in seventy nine. I mean, well, that's late seventies. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm just a baby compared to you, old. I guess. Dirt wow. devils. <laughs> um, but Tim was probably born like seventy one. Three. 73. Three. 63. It was yeah. the summer of 69. Um, Peter, you're going to have to come in here because I need somebody older than me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to go hit the cemetery for that. What, what is it, Oakwood Cemetery? Yeah, we Tim, go. Tim Baxter in here to <laughs> dig hey, up the past. We've got to we gotta bring Chris in rub his head get the crystal ball. One of, have you ever gone to one of their uh, events over there? Well, I go watched, through there? I watched this podcast when he was on here with Sam the other day, and that's some really interesting. There's some really interesting yeah. figures buried over there. Well, I, I yes. got a picture of Jackson when, when we did the flags because before it was – he said there was the Boy Scouts. It, it, I remember from when I was a kid, it was always the John J. Welch post. We would go there. The sons would go there, and we would do it every year. And up until we got rid of the the train to the Marine Corps group out in um, town of Niagara, we used to ride the train in all the parades. And I used to be in the color guard and whatnot. But that that's some really – and I think that they, you know, for what it is, they could probably charge more than $10 a person. You know, I mean, especially there's, a, there's com- some really, really fascinating stuff there. Especially if she's coming all the way from South Buffalo to conduct the tours. You know, it seems kind of, I mean, you, I wouldn't call her for one or two people. That would just be not worth her time to come here. But if anybody locally wants to go in into Oakwood Cemetery and do a tour of, you know, uh, somebody went over the falls, the the lady that went over the falls is buried there. Taylor. And, yes. yes. Um, it's ten dollars, and they 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 conduct the tours. They do uh, it well per, too. Per DM, every time you call, I guess is when they come and do it. Speaking of people coming in from out of town to do stuff, um, I don't know if y'all noticed, we got a a cleanup going on on Sunday downtown around the falls. Uh, there's a fellow coming in from uh, Tonawanda. He's got a uh, a group called the Do Good Army, and uh, this this group is actually led by Mr. Phil McVeigh. And he's bringing a group of volunteers over from, like I said, from Tonawanda. And uh, they're going to meet down at City Hall parking lot around noon. And they're going to go downstairs. They're sure going to go downtown. That meat place, Tim, you better double check that. I, I heard that that on, might have been nixed. Oh, I, I, I've got his page up here, and that's what they're saying that they want to meet down at, uh, at well, City Hall. I but, do um, know for a fact that the little bakery is having their cigar fundraiser tomorrow. Yes. 
out at that's uh, tomorrow. Smoke and Joe's and Saunders Sullivan yep. Road. That's tomorrow, but this cleanup they got scheduled for Sunday. Um, my thing is, why do we got people coming in from out of town to come in here and and take pride in our neighborhoods and our downtown area when our residents don't seem to be taking pride? Now I know we just had a cleanup from from. Uh, before the election campaign, election the citywide cycle. cleanup. Yeah, and there was a, a citywide blitz, and now we've got here we are. What are we two months out from that? And now we've got a group coming, willing to come from Tonawanda to take pride in our neighborhoods. Why aren't we taking pride in our own neighborhoods? Well, and, and that 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 goes back to what I was saying with the reciprocity between local government and community. And you you work in in the department that you work in, and, and Kenny working in the department that he works in. We, we both understand that you got certain individuals in the community that go out and will take that initiative and, and, and go out and do them things. There's some but council it, candidates that do that too. Yeah, and, you know, and, and Dante, you know. I, Dante's I, a good man. He is. Dante's I, you know, a good man. He is. And I, yesterday. He'd be the first his, guy to answer the call to go out and jump in a field somewhere. His, and his, his god baby yesterday got hit by that car, and I, I hope everything is good oh, with him. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the baby that got hit. The, um, the young boy on over on front chasing the ball. Street. Yeah, that was his guy. That was, oh, man. Um, thoughts and prayers with that baby. Prayers um, for you guys, man. And that, that is a good dude. And I, I messaged him right after that. And I, I would I would jump out there with Dante and help him many times. Same same way with you. I loved going out and doing it when we went out and did it. Um, I and did too. That was, that was a, good, a lot of work, but it, it, it was, was fulfilling. And, and me and Tim have touched on that before. I'm not. We 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 didn't go out and do that thing where we go out and take 15, 20 minutes of pictures, clean up for fifteen <laughs> minutes, and then all get together for a beer after that. We were out there for five, sometimes six hours. You know. And you it remember never, that one? Was it what was it? D Street. Oh yeah, it was it, But it was a really nice house. That it was, was a beautiful. beautiful house. Boy, and how about the neighbor that came in with that giant machine? Uh, Mr. McGrath. Mr. Graff, Mark Graff. Mark Graff, yep, yep. yep. That, yep. I, I mean, what, what a fun. thing, though. Thank God that place had that double gate. We'd have been there. We might still be there. Oh, yeah. We lost yeah. Ezra that day. <laughs> yeah, we, we we definitely almost lost Dante in that thing. I stayed on no, the that was Ezra. Ezra was on that one, too. Oh, yeah. That's well, right. and he was, was also, he was also the one with us on Up on Welsh. It was kind of, oh, yeah. kind of up there. Um, speaking about the towners, there, there's something that, Mr. Bass posted something not that long ago. And Is it Earl Bass? Earl Bass, Earl yes. Bass. I like Earl one, Bass. One of my heroes, yes. He's a good I, man. School I, boy you know, I, 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 I admire Earl. Earl. Earl has to be in one of the toughest positions being a firefighter, seeing some of the most messed up stuff, and has one of the most positive attitudes I've ever seen hey, in this what? city. I'm no longer the oldest man in the room. For, for right now. <laughs> 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 but, um... He made he made a post a couple weeks back, um, and you you made a comment. Well, actually, you you tried to push some legislation, or it was, uh, um, I know what you're talking. We're talking about the surcharges for the state. Yeah, what is, what this is, has been a passion for mine for over four years. Uh, I helped out. There was a group out there, Reclaim Niagara. Yeah, I remember I was. Out I there. found out their mission, and I embraced their mission. I was out at just about every function they have. We marched on the Fall State Park, New York State does not give us anything for the state park. No, no. You get nothing for it. Thanks, Cuomo. They make, they make a fortune over there. So I've asked, we don't want to cut into your profit, mm. but give us a surcharge. They charge $10 to park. Make it 15 with $5 going to the host municipality. Yeah. You have the Cave of the Winds and the Maid of the Mist. They're give or take $20 for ride. Add $2 surcharge for the ride to each one of them. And I think you you figured out that it would come out to be about fourteen million dollars. Twelve to fourteen million dollars. Now giving us twelve to fourteen million based on the tourist, not based on you or I or yeah. our neighbors coming in, but based on the tourist. The, and when you go to other places, Disney is funded that way. Niagara Falls, Ontario is funded that way. Yep. So for a true tourist destination, people expect it. And even yeah. fifteen dollars to park. Twenty, twenty-two dollars, twenty-four dollars to go on the ride. You're not going to not go on the ride for a couple dollars, and you're not going to hurt them in their pockets to where it would be able to come back and it would be a, a consistent, stable, revenue stream for us as a city. And, then, and exactly, that's what it would. It would be a very stable revenue stream, and based on that was my numbers were based on half of what the state numbers are. Yeah. The states say we have nine million. I figure we have three to five. That, to me, that's more realistic because $9 million, if you do the numbers, that's like filling a football stadium every day. 
Yeah. Every day, like 80,000 people every day. And I just, I don't see that. But um, well, the it's a great part. charge. The problem is that I couldn't get it up. It has to be carried by our local state leaders. That was my next question. How do we as a community come in? And me and you have definitely talked about this before because you know I am about pushing the community and making them take the responsibility for what they're responsible for. You can only do so much. You can't call Angelo for everybody in Niagara Falls. You can't call Senator Ort for everybody in Niagara Falls. And how can people in the city of Niagara Falls basically support you? They, or, have, to reach out. they have to reach out to our leaders. Write letters. That, that's what they have to do. Let them know that why do you not want this... I have heard that, you know, Niagara Falls wouldn't know what to do with if we got the money we would squander it away. That's not a bad argument. <laughs> That's not a bad argument. But there's a new administration. I think we have a very well-working council right now. Mm-hmm. Everybody really delves together and tries to work out uh, grievances and, you know, tries to find middle ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think now is the time that we do it. Do you realize what a turnaround that would be for Niagara Falls? Oh, yeah. yeah. We have dropped, since I've been in council, we went from almost $13 million dollars Based, uh, that we needed casino funds down to $7.5 million. And that, that's that's basically borrowing against future casino funds, correct? No, it's well, because no. they've cut everybody from the DPW. We, we've, cut, we've cut all that. So, well, there's still one mechanic left. No, no, rid of, but no, it's just I want to meet that guy that. someday. Hopefully he'll teach me something. <laughs> you could probably find him over at Maloney's eating the sub. No, no. Chantel oh, yeah, made some great mushrooms, mushrooms, mushrooms tonight. Man, them things are good. That's right. Jackson, fried I don't think he's complaining about his french shrooms? fries. I sure did. Yeah. No and wonder you're a little funky magic. tonight. You know? yeah, from the guy coming in dressed as a damn pirate. All right. right. He got an assorted sub from there, <laughs> and Jackson got a huge yeah, How was that sub? Did you eat your sub? Oh, yeah. I was oh, what gone. is this? Chantel great. did good? She did good. Chantel does she very good. good. I had the uh, sausage sub last week, and, man, it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Does good work over there, and that's a local woman-owned business, small business, just started up. I Still call good over there. talk for a one-eyed we got, fat uh, man. Even Dustin. Dustin, how was your sub, buddy? It's so the second week in a row we had your uh, sub over there. How'd you think? Gonna, it, I actually got the same sub, uh, but it was. It you was just good. you don't take risk at all. Tasted Dustin. like it was made Dustin, with the same you're amount too of young love. Not to try different stuff. I'm picky. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Chantel does good over there. I actually had it for for lunch from work one day. I went over there and, and grabbed a sub from over there again. And so far, I haven't had a bad sub from over there. Yeah, the mushrooms were good. I'm not going to complain. Yeah, the mushrooms are good. They're, you always get a good lunch hour. I do. Them French yeah. or French fries were, I do. were good. You know, we have to amount. call ahead because we don't have time really to stop. We have so much work to do because we're so short-handed. Ah! I wouldn't, I wouldn't have enough time to leave my job and go pick up the food and come back and still have any time left on lunch. Well, you got to drive fast. I, I do drive fast. <laughs> I still wouldn't have enough time. You just got to call ahead. <laughs> oh, I forgot, um, though. You know, we have that eight-hour workday with only a half an hour lunch. That's what we have. Oh, I couldn't do There's it. There's no way you can go hour. from your job to that place and back and eat in a half an hour. Well, nobody said we didn't have a road call out here. <laughs> hey, Tim got them fried mushrooms and crushed most of them <laughs> in the five minutes that we were standing Damn outside. Right, they were good. <laughs> um, speaking of council members working no! with the governor, you got three new council <coughs> members coming in we with do. Uh, with Chris. One and, way or the other, we have three council members Bill leaving, in, yeah. and um, Mr. Soda's only temporary until the next vote. Well, I wish he wasn't. Yeah. You, you learn the, so much. That from this man, man is a savage up there. You you, you learn so much from it. Is when we're upstairs getting ready to come down for council stuff. You ask him questions. Mm-hmm. He, he was a social studies teacher. He was a, you know a government th- kind of teacher. He has a passion for it. And you could see it. Well, when he started rattling off, I need the numbers for what's in this account. What's in this account? What's in this account? Why don't we have these numbers? I was like, that's a man that's mm-hmm. on top of his shit. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and you know, and that's that's the one thing that that I don't want to say attractive because it kind of sounds weird, but that was one of the draws when when I first started coming to the council meetings and watching you, because you were, hey, why the hell is community development doing this, or why is this like this, and we don't have enough they don't of like that. that. No. no, they they definitely no, didn't. they don't like that. At all. No, no, and it was it was a bad. I remember. Uh, Remember I had to foil it? Well, I think, yeah, and I think Mel, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Uh, Nick's Mr. never going to live that down. Nick Melson, was a good yeah. guy. He is a great guy. He's he a friend of mine. He actually is a well, friend of mine. He told me, I remember he, what that what turned me off about him was when he said that it's not your, you don't have the authority to do this. You don't, it was something about 
community development, and that's when you had to foil it. And that that showed the the transparency issue of the administration towards just the lack the of purse, communication between you know. the two. I um, gotta say, you bodies. ask this administration any question, you get an answer pretty quick. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask you next. Is there is there a, a, a difference between? It's definitely two different styles. It's two different ways of doing business. Uh, I think uh, you know Paul's administration was a little bit looser in some respects. You you got a little bit more out of it. Well, or I think the mayor is looking at it more as a business, and he is trying to right the ship because he came into a pretty tough ship oh, financially, yeah. and then boom, COVID. And I think a lot of people don't realize that neither, because a lot of people, obviously, we all look at Facebook and whatnot, mm. and whoever took over the action page, you guys are doing a horrible job <laughs> i just wanted to make that clear you guys are terrible what is this um, facebook thing that, oh yeah you're still on myspace <laughs> where all the other pirates are at um pirates pe- people don't seem to understand that he's not been in there but but 18 months yeah roughly yeah. uh 7 12 well i don't know nine, when uh, at the council meeting this week one of the speakers said it doesn't care if it's 18 months or not you should be able to walk in there and just do do too well and I, but them are people that are uninformed well and them right. are people well, you that don't low understand how you, it works those are low information and potentially not voters well the, they, and it's people easier need to for understand. people to say that without without taking their their civil duty to go out and vote for people and actually be informed on these things and that's a lot of the problem of why we're in the situation as a whole There's national state local and it's, it's easier very to easy point. to sit on facebook or just come in and say something and not do any action for well, and, and that, i mean and that's why i say i, lo- I love trolling on facebook and i love posting <laughs> them things but i also go out and bust Thank my ass means. when i need to and earn that credit and that's what a lot of people need there's not one person from from you up until higgins to to biden that i couldn't be able to walk in and, and point out and say well Ain't that Robert Ord over there? That's New York State Senator Brian Higgins. And when you get that kind of information where you can actually look at a person and say, I know that person. I know that person. I know what they're about. That that's that's when you're taking the incentive to actually learn about the issues rather than just be an issue and pointing out the issues. Brian Higgins. Uh Brian Higgins is a, a Democrat. I was a Republican. Since the first day I met him, he embraced me would answer any time I called, would help me in any way I, I asked. Like I do like him. <laughs> I don't like that hair. Well, you may not like his hair. <laughs> his hair is just He is a, South, he is a South Buffalo guy, and I tell you, he does for Niagara Falls. Now, he, yeah. he when he took over Niagara Falls, because he didn't have it at one time, no. mm-hmm. when he took over Niagara Falls, he saw that with, like, the Power Authority deal, we got screwed. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he says, all right, I can't change the deal, but he hits him. He hits him for a million dollars here. He hits him for a hundred thousand dollars here. He hits yeah. him for, you know. So and he's, he he's playing. Keeps, he's he playing a game with him. He's and playing he a game with him. Is helping Niagara Falls to me more than anybody I've seen in my lifetime. He isn't, really fights for the falls. Isn't Brian Higgins uh, also helping out trying to get the border opened up? He yeah, absolutely yeah, is fighting he's for the border. Definitely open trying up, to get the border open, which up. is catch twenty two for me personally. Yeah. I want the border open. My Family has a cottage in Canada. They'd like to see it after a couple of years, you know. <laughs> I had another friend of the family's. Uh, he had a water line broke. Who knows how long it was pouring into his place, how much damage well, is going to be up there, you know. I've noticed that there's but, not as much trash. Uh, right, you don't see I'm going to leave trash. Canadians alone. Because and and you kind of got to let, um, you know, <laughs> the visitors are staying here, which yeah. is helping our economy a little bit more. But... You're going to get a ton more tourists. You're going to get more people that are going to pass through. Yeah, we need so both it's, sides. So it's catch twenty two. We definitely need both did sides. You, uh, did you happen to catch the the People's Party of Canada that actually contacted the Constitutional Coalition? Uh, Nancy Ordercelli. They're having a uh, it's called a worldwide freedom protest. They're doing that well, tomorrow. It's, it's rough up there. Yeah, they're well, going through a lot. Tomorrow from uh, noon to three p.m. They're doing it at the Rainbow Bridge. Um, I guess they're going to be. Mm-hmm. Trying to meet in the middle on the Rainbow Bridge. I know the Rolling Patriots was another group that's coming out with their their pickup trucks and are they allowed to go out flags. onto the bridge? Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be allowed to go out on the flags or not. Um, they're just trying to get you know the U.S. and the, the Canada to be able to open the border. Talk I, you, and get I it deal open. with some Canadian citizens, different companies that we have to do business with. A lot of the product around here comes out of Canada, out of the Toronto area. And most of the people I talk to, the Canadians, they don't want it open yet. 
No, no, no they're, they they're afraid. A lot of them open. are really definitely yeah. afraid of this right now. They definitely don't want it open. I mean, it's like a whole country of Democrats. There's some people that want it open, and there's some people that don't want it open. I mean, <laughs> right now they're saying about 28% want it yeah. open. Yeah. It's not great odds. Well, and no. they're, I don't think they're even at, at 60% vaccination. It's not. It's still it's, in the 50s. Yeah, well, it's still they, low. Didn't, there was but just then again, a there's a bunch of people here that refuse to get the vaccination, no matter how much science is pushed it forward. Well, and now we're starting to climb. And don't be surprised if before too long we're going to be masking up again. Well, yeah, and well, that it's the Delta variant that's pushing it that, that they're afraid of, and they're, right. they're saying that 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 this vaccine is is also able to handle that that variant. Well, well, what they're also saying, even if you catch it, you catch it at a lesser intensity. Yeah, they're saying yeah. the people that are now dying are the unvaccinated people. Well, and no, that's they were going to do the that. Narrative from, is, but they were going to go with that from the get go, anyways. Once they yes. got to the point where the, where they you got know, to this, I, I got I got to call I got to call bullshit on this because you know you you see when you go to one of those labs, they show the videos of people working in those labs. These people are in Tyvek suits. They're on yeah. airlines breathing. I mean, they have rubber gloves. So and they're in and, front of this stuff twenty four seven. But though, you yeah. got working these, you got this virus. You're telling me that a pair of underwear over your face is going to stop you from getting it? I, sure I, has done a good job so far. Well, that's what the variants, people's opinions it's, Why did it change that. all well, of a sudden? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, gonna be a, an opinion-based The thing flu doesn't regardless. last forever. I mean, the flu oh, is According to my daughter, my one daughter, I had a stroke because I had the vaccine. Well, that's that's her uh, belief, and she'll never change that. But she, you that's know, why you I, had it. That, and see, that's part of the reason some people won't get the vaccine because... Where is there any kind of proof that says you did or didn't? Well, I'll tell you one there's thing. There's no research to support either way. That's there, there's, one, there's one thing. I know why. I, I know where my stress level is. Yeah. Um, I All I got to say is that uh, for me, if I could help my family just that little bit and maybe get someone not get as sick, I'll do it in a heartbeat. But B, I will guarantee you in my years on this earth, I have definitely put worse stuff than whatever's in that vaccine through my body. Yeah, and that, that's another reason why I, I've, I'm i kind of on the fence about it. Like, for me, it's, it's more of a, I smoke cigarettes, so, I, you know, I'm already. I smoke. And then Melissa's But like, you'll put well, that not, in your thing, but you won't take the chance on yeah, a vaccine. Yeah, well, and, and you'll Melissa, eat them fried mushrooms. Melissa but you made that point. Hey, 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 don't be cutting down Chantel's I'm not cutting her cooking. I'm good. talking about the food itself. I bet you they're wonderful. I would have loved some. They're one of my favorite foods. But you they're know, fried, yes. But they're fried. You know, <laughs> that's you not know the what? best You think you. about that food, too. Let's, let's, the Impossible Whopper. You got a meat, a, a Plant-based I got meat two boxes product. of Beyond Burgers. How many years how, has there been a chicken McNugget? How many years have we been getting that stuff and not known about it? Well, and now they're just now coming out with it being it. Because listen, that's Sub- something Subway that's got to be a oh, problem. Subway just We're got in die. trouble because they had no tuna, tuna? DNA <laughs> trace in their tuna fish. Isn't that amazing? I don't even know how that happens. <laughs> like, how do Is you that get? really, really true? I, I, the FDA has been it's after them on it. Gotta they, be, or they, they wouldn't have made it to court where they, it's at right now, you know, right? They just made this big thing about how now all of their tuna fish is hundred percent tuna. I always wondered how that sat out in a bowl, you know, three, four, five hours during the day. And just sat there. Yeah. I, I don't you know, any place like that that has a reaching cold cooler that's that's kinda got the lid that never is down and you're always looking there and there's always a fly stuck in there when the damn thing is down. I don't trust some kind of restaurants to begin with. Well, I'll tell you, Maloney's across the street isn't like that. I, no, I was impressed. She, it's clean as can be it. over there. Yep. Do you know the address of this Maloney's place? Uh, Maloney's. Hey, Peter, what's the address of Maloney's? Yeah, we got it chance, on uh, right okay. across the street from us. <laughs> I, I, you know, Thanks, that's Dustin. the best, Dustin. What's our address? Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> It's across the street for Joey's Pizza. Everybody knows Joey's Pizza on Buffalo Avenue. We got the menu that's in a wonderful there that pizza. should have yes. the address on it. And yeah. we're right I'm next lactose to intolerant, pizza. so. That's right. That's what I said. It's right across from it. Here, you know what? I got the address here because I've got the it has got the flyer in his pocket. Yes, I do. You know, when um, you asked him for directions, he 80s. said, well, you know the McDonald's over here? Hey, it's hey, three hey, houses hey. up from that. You know the Make pizza left joint the, over here? It's two houses we got, from uh, no, Make a no, left no, no, at the Blue House, and the Blue House is not nowhere near the corner. <laughs> you know, it's one you of got, them kind uh, of they, All right, all right. Here you go, Mr. MapQuest. It's 8662 <laughs> Buffalo Avenue, and our phone number is 205-8564. And what does she serve there? Oh, she serves cold subs. Cold subs. They have Hot deli subs. there. They yeah. serve uh, lunch meat by the pound. I had one pound. of her uh, subs, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it um, was a good, definitely, definitely uh, nice. And you know, it was a, th- it was a very good. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy.
got pizza logs, you got mozzarella sticks. I mean, all the, the your fryer food and stuff like that. Hot subs, cold subs. She's got uh, 50 set boneless wings on Monday. Nice. I like boneless wings. Anything for the vegan? Um, you look subs. like a boneless wing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Does her tuna sub have tuna? Oh, that's a good question. It's, it's probably Star Kit. Or, uh, well, she's open till 8 o'clock. We could go over there. We got 10 <laughs> minutes to go find out. Go ask her. But um, um, Quick, call her, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got some uh, some comments here on Facebook. We got Mr. Uh, David Florio. What's up, Dave? Kevin Hutchinson saying evening, everybody. Hello, Kevin. Um, Dave. Lori, Miss Lori Jo Pello. Look at that. Lori Jo's on again. She, she's she's kind of famous. She's a groupie. She's like a Rob Shot. I think she's one of our groupies. I, it could be. Mm. She probably sits in her backyard mm. sipping tea and probably just thinks these two are a bunch of idiots. They, <sighs> how do I we wonder, get them off? How do they yeah. get Kenny on <laughs> there? Don't, don't you wonder? Don't you wonder what might be in that tea? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything because Lori could be a bully when she wants she would to. Pro- she would probably love the charging station idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she wouldn't. She doesn't like gas stations neither. She said she two tanks of gas in her car. Well, no, this is in what four in years? Year, yeah. <laughs> four years she's run two tanks of gas in her car. God, well, that, you're going to be able to beat her though with that new one of yours. You know, you wait till you see. As long as you're going new. downhill, you'll be all set. You know what? I found out the problem. It's uh, two dead, or it's got one dead cylinder. The compression check, cylinder one, cylinder two, over 150 pounds. Cylinder three is. You're going to have to come look nice. and see if we can figure out why my truck goes fucking begging down the road. I told you your choke's probably stuck on that. We'll get that figured out though. That's the, that's good old Chevy muscle. Chevy I'm waiting. Out. But. Um, <laughs> We uh, well, let's. Get, I got a question for you. You know, you you've already announced that uh, you're not planning on running for re-election. Um, yeah, I will not run for city council again. No. What um, What are some of the things that you're proud of accomplishing or attempting to accomplish, being a part of accomplishing? And um, what what you got any kind of goals to set for the last uh, couple of years on your term here? What are some things you want to get as done? As far as goals for the last kind of term, I just want to keep trying to move the city as forward as we can. Uh, you know, I try to work with both sides of the fence. I left the party that I was with because I felt that uh, at this level of government, the party politics were getting in the way. I just don't believe in that. At Are you level, a good witch or a bad witch? <laughs> at this level of government, I think that everybody should really just be for the people and, and just forget about the differences. But I didn't find it working that way. I didn't find it working that way at all. And, uh, you know, certain things have happened it was just time. I didn't like that you were going to have one side so much the advantage of the other. Uh, when I got on, uh, I was the first Republican elected in a long time. And I remember at one to- point, the Democratic, uh, or had bigwig in the Democratic Party, looked out to me. He says, how do you get stuff passed? How do you get it done? Mm-hmm. And I said, because I bring it out to the people. Yeah. And once you bring it to the people, if it's a good idea, the others had no choice Right. But to follow along with you. They had How? to change their thinking because they could see that the people wanted it. I just, uh, what I, I'm proud of is that. <laughs> that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Jackson back there being the executive manager. <laughs> Come on, Jackson, get him under control, buddy. But I just like that we, um, that the people realize that you could reach out, you could talk to them. My phone would ring. It still does. No. You know, 24-7. They don't care if it's Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. You know, I've had phone calls 2 o'clock in the morning. Or we're in Rochester. I, I've messaged right. them <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning. And you answer, and you try to get them the answers. Whether it's a good answer or a bad answer, that's all or they want. Or direct them where they can get the answers. Absolutely. Yeah. And push for stuff. And don't be afraid don't to always, push. People don't always like your answers, though, do they? They don't always like your answers. And <laughs> the one thing, you, you get, you'll get yelled at or berated or called this or called that. But until you're actually sitting in the seat, and see every aspect of what that decision has to be, what it affects. Every, what is it, what do they say? Every reaction or every action causes As a reaction. reaction. <laughs> Cause and effect. Uh, well, if you don't know all the things, because not everything can be brought out into the public. Right. So if you can't see everything that's out there, you don't know why a decision is based on that. Well, and that, that's that's the one thing that we were talking about last week when I said if you go back until, and I posted it recently, you have to go back to 2014 to see why we came to the Tompkins trash tax. Well, the, the garbage fee, the, the garbage that should have been a thing in 2014. The garbage fee was recommended by two financial review boards. Yes. All right, but the garbage fee 
But it shouldn't, when it came it, it shouldn't out, have gone to that I, point. Not for the garbage with. fee, didn't want the garbage yeah. fee, wanted nothing to do with the garbage fee. But when it came, push comes to shove. It had to have been done. Well, you had three yeah. choices. They yes. all sucked. Yeah. I picked the least suckiest of the choices. And, and but, that's why I said when, when people but, just jump out into the idea of I want to be involved and they come in halfway through the story. But, I, I, but I'll tell you the one thing. I would rather have made a stand like I did yeah. and take the hits that I did well, than be one trying, of the people I mean. that just sat there and said no and not mm. offer an alternative to that plan. Oh, who we don't know anybody that would do that. No, it was just Buddy. Tim's well, remember buddy the vote man. was three to two. No. So there was two people that didn't come up with a plan. So yeah. if you're going to do something, if you're just going to say no, no is the easiest way out. And, yeah, no would have been the popular answer. So what would have happened? That's what I was saying about. You lay off 70 people. Yeah. Or it's an no! almost an 18% tax in, or tax increase to people. Yeah. And a no! tax increase will never go away where the garbage fee, if this administration keeps moving the way they're going, it could be lowered, lowered or gotten rid of. Yeah. Though the lowering is hard because the garbage fee, the way the law is written for a fee, has to pay the garbage bill. Yeah. yeah. So and you can't pay, I'm going to put 200 towards the garbage bill and 200 from somewhere else. It's my thing has always been, though, that it should have been it should have been instituted in 2014 at a certain lower rate and then built itself up. And, you well, know, the, with, also with part the, of to it. To reflect inflation. Also of, of part the, of it, too, is that our cost for garbage was less, but the people wanted more bulk pickup. Well, and but people whatever you also do don't understand. costs more money. Miner's not just going to say, all right, we're going to pick it all up for the same price. People right. also don't understand that back when all these deals were going down, China was buying a lot of her recycling to create products. There is no recycling. Market. And they don't, they don't buy it. We almost have to pay anymore. to get rid of stuff. Yeah. Now. And, and well, the same with, with uh, Sweden. <coughs> Sweden see, used to get paid to take in the trash to turn it into to energy, kind of like Avanta does. Right. That's back when them things were going on in the early 2000s or uh, early 2010 and whatnot. They don't happen no more, so we're not getting that recycling. Money Other like people this, also so. look at Lewiston and the town of Niagara and say, why don't they pay or they can take whatever they want out there? A, Lewiston is now implementing a limit on what you can yeah. put out. But what people don't realize is the dump is in town of Niagara, not yes. the city of yes. Niagara Falls. As host municipality, a low state park surcharge, yes. they mm. get a lower rate. Lewiston, the dump is in Lewiston. Yeah. Again, host municipality surcharge. They pay a lesser rate. Well, and, and so that's one of the reasons. And plus, look at the size of our city as compared to the size. The amount of, of trash and, that's being and, put out, too. Well, that no. is, is ridiculous. And just, I'm not talking and again, about this. You also this have, go back to a business rain. again. So you have landlords. Mm. Long term or short term, it's a business. So <laughs> when it's they evict somebody or somebody moves out and leaves a bunch of stuff, yeah. they just throw it all to the curb and expect it to be picked up. At that point in time, shouldn't you pick up your own dumpster? Or your little yeah. green bag that you can buy. Well, and they, like they should Home be Depot forced to because it, 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 what, what people don't also understand is that when DPW has to go pick that up, that's an additional fee. Yes. Oh, it's that's, not, that's not a part of, of the, that's not the contract. That's not a normal service. No. That's, that's taken to the yard. And what are, what are they at? 200000 And as long as that's sitting down there. The last I checked, they were paying $200,000 for removal. For the, the dumpsters. That are yeah. kept as, as long as that stuff's sitting on the street. So they they take it out on the first of the month and DPW doesn't get there till seventh of the month because it takes a little while to go through the process. How much garbage is blown all over? Yeah. Well, you know, how much started has gotten Critters ripped through homes. Or, or people that are looking through it to say, Hey, I wonder if there's anything good. Yeah. So there's some cans in it. Cans you know, that, or that's what looking happens. for things to sell. And, and that's a, one of the reasons that the city, uh, you know, gets looking like a dump. Well, well you know, Niagara what? Falls reminds me of, you ever seen the movie Labyrinth with David Bowie? And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the little bag lady where she was inside the bag <laughs> and did the trash field. And, well, let me see if I got let this over here, sweetie. Yeah. You know, that, that it reminds me a lot of that. And I, I think that um, there are compromises that can be made as far as trash goes, like I've, like I've said before about maybe – Dumpster yards, opening up dumpster yards, but that all comes with, with time and planning. The right. problem with the dumpster yard, if it's not manned, God only knows yes. where it gets Well, you would now. get, that was part of what I wrote down as far as getting people that um, work for a Department of Social Services, cash recipients. But it's also teaching them a certain skill, maybe a right. customer service skill. Something. I hate to say it, though. I think them dumpsters would fill quick, and I think they'd fill with a lot of stuff that you probably shouldn't put in. Well, and that, right. that's why you would get them there and you train them up saying, can't. "Yeah, but you got this trail over here for construction and, and, and electronics. 
You got this over here for your recycling. Well, now well, you'd have to be are, there twenty four seven. Yeah, recycling. Yeah. Well, for you the close it down and do it during, during, during a, a certain hour of operations. Yeah, kind of like they do in North Carolina. In North Carolina, you have to live in in the in the the denser populations in 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 the mountains of North Carolina to have a, a, a garbage truck come to your house. Right. Where we lived at was in in the sticks, so we had to take our trash. To these dumpster yards, there was no pickup for us. You just burn everything. There you go. We weren't allowed to because if you did that, then it was an environmental. It was an oh, to. catch twenty two. Well, because you're up in the mountains with all the. I've the, always the, thought though, with any of the contracts, that they should do a Saturday morning or like a, till seven o'clock at night that people can take the stuff to the dump. You'll get yeah. a dump permit taken. Because like me, I, I'm in. Uh, I'm at work Monday through Friday. Long same time that the dumps are open. So how do I get mm-hmm. extra stuff to the dump? Well, well, I had that, to do it once when we uh, got rid of a shed in my house. I had to take half a day off of work to you be able to take stuff out there. And I had one. Yeah, you have I sheds at your house? I did. I did. That's why I brought it up when I sent in a letter back when we had to send letters in during the COVID lockout, lockdown, hmm. where we couldn't come into the council meetings. Right. And said that, um, God, I had to bring it apart. Oh, no. I did it again. Just well, well, I'm it, gonna... was, it was it was it was along the lines of the dumpster, um, the hours of operation. Oh, that's what I was going to say is that with modern, they're revolving people around a service. They're forcing people to, to go around their hours of operations when right, people don't live the within them hours of operations, and they have to revolve the service around the people rather right. than making people go around. Even the DMV's think, open one day. I late would every think. Week. I would yeah. think that. It's pretty normal for most people, not everybody, because you have, you know, hospital staff and stuff like that. But I would think that at least 50% of your people, if not more, are, you know, eight to fivers. Yeah, well, I, I see it all the time, and I have to tell, constantly tell people. They're always like, oh, well, just take it and throw it out in City Hall parking lot. Bro, if you want to yeah. if you want to see me run downstairs and just start Here's swinging. your parents' ticket. I, I clean up enough bullshit over on 7th <laughs> Street. I don't need no... Well, you know, I was looking. I, I saw a thing that was posted about uh, City of Lockport has a garbage user fee. They've had for for a good number of years well, now, and it hasn't been adjusted since 2011. They're getting their first increase since 2011. I was reading. Even when they I were talking about sixty percent. Even yes. even when they were even when they were debating this back in um, um, January or June 10th of 2014, mm-hmm. Tuma said that all the municipalities around us have a user fee. Yes. And the one, t- my one takeaway from that 2014 thing that stuck with me this entire time was between him and Chaloki, and they were both pushing, we need more free services. We got the golden ticket. We got casino funds until 2026. Ran out before you even really got down because I remember your first major thing was the, 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 um, the, the moving the water thing for, for the statue. For the that was statue. one of the main first things that I you did. I still can't believe we spent that kind of money on that. Well, I mean, I, I just, I just don't, don't believe some of the money with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with art. Love no, there's art. not. But that's you not art. art. But to me, art's a good. The guy. city is like building a house. Mm-hmm. Before we put the fancy trim on, which to me would be the art, gotta make sure the foundation. You gotta make sure that the foundation yeah. and the walls are built. Strong. Well, and, and like I said uh, last week, I think we even brought this up. Um, at that point in time, we were offered the Tesla statue that's valued at five hundred thousand dollars. That's overlooking Luna Falls right now, and it was actually offered to us with the transportation and installation, so it wouldn't have cost us. It would have us. been a beautiful spot for it. And he, he, that's such an have amazing Have you ever looked statue. at that circle? Uh, hmm. where, right there? That, that Yeah, that circle right there. It's like a natural well, you know, with garden. The, with the, uh, Tim. the guardrail that's all messed up, basically. That's what yeah. that looks yeah, like. Yeah, the twisted metal guard. But look yeah. at the circle itself. There's so many tire tracks on it because the buses and stuff can't make well, that turn. Buses. And, and it's all over it. That that right there was, um, especially where I'm at too. The routes they they should be set on a certain route. Truck routes, bus because, routes. Yeah, because they do a lot of damage. Because right outside well, my house, again, look at the state. The state is doing anything and everything oh, they man. can to push vehicles coming over the Grand Island Bridge to the park. Well, yeah, because they get that, the they get that and go over to the, the bridge park one. and give all the money so that mm. Niagara Falls again could it's be the golden short. egg for our. Beloved governor in Albany. Oh, well, yeah, and then they get that toll it, money, too. We have three, and if you include the Peace Bridge, four international bridges yeah. right here. It's Ken Hamilton. You got five because the railroad bridge is separate. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, so he says you got five bridges. You have the Power Authority. Mm-hmm. You have um, Niagara Falls, New York State Park. And you have a casino that's supposed to draw people to the area. Yep. 
How are we poor? Hey, I, I've often wondered that. Uh, well, well, how much you know, money did we get from the power authority? How much money do we get from the state park? How much do we get from the CBDG? Who you know did I mean? those deals? That's what? the million, that's the million the dollar state, question. And what did they get for the people that did do the deals? The that's state did the a lot question. of them deals, and that that, that was our down. first mistake. Well, the problem is that I firmly coming. believe that around here, they're afraid to piss off the government. We get a lot of money as far as because we're a poverty city. Yeah. But that's different money. Well, and it's a scaled thing. And it's right. But, that it, but that's different money. City. But everyone's afraid. You don't want yeah. uh, We need the money. Well, you Our school district needs the money. The people need the money. There, nobody has the money. There's well, you, very limited on how much money that people have. You would rather they have for disposable income. You would rather eat table scraps than than, than starve to death. The governor, has got, exactly. the governor has got a reputation of running this state. Strong willed like, like a mafia. You piss him off and, and you suffer his but wrath. But the problem is that the cash is from here. Yeah. Right. And his base is in New York City. And, and New they York City everything. would just keep control. He doesn't win in this yeah. area. No, not no. at all. He, he doesn't win in this one. area. Nope. Which is why we get shafted every time it comes to I mean, to am money I glad like that. that we got like USA Niagara and they're putting money in and they're working on the properties? Absolutely. Yeah. Very happy that they're doing it. It's good for the city, but we need more. Yeah. But we it, need that steady. We need our stream. share. The problem with the we with are the whole the whole is that something happens at the gorge. Our fire department goes up, ties up yeah. their time doing that. We have to have backup people come in. Well, and there's All also right. other deals though. With, but they with the arrest state. somebody. Think about it. The police, the park police, arrest them. They handed our police. Yeah, yeah, we have to do transport. How do you get else? to that bridge? How do you get to? How do you get to? You got to drive over our roads, yeah. which we have to maintain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you go to the bathroom. At the state park. You're on our water. It, go? <laughs> it goes down our sewer system. It's eating up our resources. Absolutely. Definitely. So why, as the host municipality, do we not get it? I mean, you don't even want to talk about the casino flip. Senator Ort has it dead right that it should be flipped. Yeah. We should get to 75. Where's our convention center? Part of the we deal, never got it back. Part of the deal was yeah. they gave us a conference center. But a conference center is not a convention. You're no, not going to have do monster trucks the WWE wrestling. or yeah. something like that. Ah, You're the not big thing that, 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 that made us fun until somebody got ran over by a monster truck tire. Um, that was that was that was, that was I was there. I knew the man. I was there. It was crazy. I, that I, was, I remember. The man was. I remember when that happened, and then just before that, I went to go see American Gladiators. Hmm. Back when American Gladiators came to Niagara Falls. And then, like, two weeks later, we went to go see that, and that's when that happened. It was like, after that, everything kind of seemed different at the convention center. Hey, did you hear the concert announcement today? Jamie? No. Miranda Lambert is coming to Niagara Casino. The Seneca Niagara Casino. Ron White is coming. Uh, Ron White's coming? Ron White is coming. I would like to go see Ron White. Ron White's been here a few times. I've never seen him live. Uh, I, uh, Melissa got tickets to go see Dane Cook. I didn't get to go see Dane Cook uh, live. Miranda Lambert is um, I tell you, Christian Printup does the uh, booking and stuff over. The, he really brings them in. Well, he does a hell of a job. I'll Shout out you, to you, Christian. You really well, do a good job. I saw there. that today. I'd like to get him on here to talk to him and see how he how – he, Pulls these people. I don't know. He might TikTok you to death. Though. Well, don't forget, hey, we, okay. he is one of the best TikTokers you ever see. Well, He's I know. I know. I've seen one of my favorite uh, musicians posted today that he has um, a show coming up October 29th at the Wagon Wheel. Jamie hey, Jamie Holka. Jamie Holka. Yes. Jamie I Hoka. love Jamie's music. Yes. Absolutely. That guy can um, slam a guitar. We got a new promoter over there at the uh, the river or at uh, the Rapids Theater Rapids, too. Anita yeah. West. Anita I mean, West. Yeah. I want to. I want to see some blues if, bands. I want to see if I could pull her in because I absolutely love blues. And um, she's very approachable. I've talked to her about Summerfest before. Yeah. She's very approachable. Uh, very she's nice. She's person. worked at a couple of different places, from what I understand. Oh, 97 Rock. She's a nice. Um, Looks like we're we got about, about, uh, we're about, about to here, wrap buddy. it up. If yeah. Kenny, you got anything to say about, uh, you want to put anything out there, maybe about Summerfest or anything that's coming up? Well, Summerfest is uh, August 15th. It runs 11 to 5, Sal Magley Stadium. We'd love to have you. We have some great classic car, good food. Uh, we have adult beverages. We have a bunch of vendors that will be there selling their wares. Uh, and you got five of the best bands in the area donating their talents 
to put on a great show for a great cause. How many uh, how many Hawaiian shirts you got arranged out for this year? I got four so far this year. Four right? so far? So far, yeah. I'm afraid to wear mine because of when I had that last cookout, I broke out real bad. I got a couple of them, though, that I may... Uh, you do kind I of look t- like a Samoan. It I may try and be fitting. like try and be like my buddy Ken and uh, put mine on as well because I'll be there all day as well. well. I've got about 50 in the closet. <laughs> All right, what else you got going on? Anything else you want to get on? Um, let, what what can people do, or who who can people write to, or is there a, a way that you can, well, you can inbox it to me, but is there a way that we can set up an address for people to go ahead and write to 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 Assemblyman Angelo Morinello? Absolutely, uh, we Senator can we can get, we can get you the addresses and, and for all our state leaders. Try to Congressman get the, the ball rolling. They all have local offices. Well, they're all right there across. Yeah, they the all city have lo- and they all they all talk to whoever. Yeah, yeah and they're, and they're good, good people. Men. Yeah, they they're are good, good people. Men. They're yes. absolutely good men. Um, I've known Angel for many, many, many years, and uh, Senator Ort. Actually, my wife's maiden name is Ort. Yeah, well, yeah. So you know, they're, they're, they're cousins. cousins. Yes, you know, yeah. they're cousins. Oh, yeah. Now we know how you got elected as council. <laughs> Oh. It's all part of the family business. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> that's it. Because they all knew me and knew how well, uh, how yeah, deep, dark did. inside I was, you know, to the Republican Party. It's like the Kennedys and the Rothschilds and the Cuomos and everybody else. Going the friends and family. If that's, the, if that's the case, then Kennedy should be a shoo-in in the 60s. Oh, oh, good shit. Lord. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? You're talking Absolutely. Kennedy. Absolutely. The yes, name Kennedy. recognition. What about you, Mr. Tim? Do you got any uh, final messages you want to leave us with? I'm going to leave us with a, a quote like I always do. Well, well, he's going to follow me home and get that Chevy running. Yes, <laughs> after I get the little Geo going. Um, just to, you know what? It's going to be decent this weekend. Um, people Are we gotta, supposed to get a huge rain shower tomorrow? Everyone's your talking. Tongue. Yeah, like Everybody is talking about like there's yes. another storm out there, but I haven't seen yeah. it on the forecast. Mm, I hope not. 1.5 inches is what the Channel 4 said tomorrow. Come on down, uh, come on down my street. You'd be amazed. There's... If there's 15 houses on my street, eight of them have big, big Pile piles of stuff out. outside. Damn. Well, the mayor did put out that they're having modern doing the extra bulk pickup for I'm, the I'm damaged normal days, stuff. Yes. But I, I, I'm telling you, Tim, some of these are just massive. Mm-hmm. Some uh, are some people taking advantage of the situation. Maybe we got landlords that are. I don't know. If I'm looking at, it, I, I've been seeing Serve Pro and stuff all over the neighborhood. Let's, carpet cleaners everywhere. Let's let's hope I lost the carpet. Well, it'll be all right. But, um, yeah, get out this weekend if you get a chance. Um, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Obviously, we've got uh, the the little gathering going on over at uh, the uh, Rainbow Bridge tomorrow from 12 to 3. we got the cigar uh, benefit. The for, um, Road. Yes, that's um, – yeah, I'll throw one out that's different for you. 11 to 1 tomorrow at Power City Eatery, there's a group around here called Niagara Pride. Yes. They built a garden on the side of Power yeah. City Eatery. They're having, they call it a coffee clutch. So stop in. I've met them. I've helped them actually on the garden. They're some of the nicest people you ever meet. Ro- uh, uh, Ronald. Ronald. Yeah. Ronald's pride Ronald pride. P, man. Because I couldn't mm. say his last name if I had a million dollars. That's why I didn't try. I didn't. I you don't, know? I'll but Ron it. really cares. He's a, a Lockport neighbor, but boy, he's adopted Niagara Falls. Mm-hmm. And what they've done out there, there's really a good group of people. I mean, they had, for a little garden, they probably had 25, 30 people out there helping. You know, so they're going to come and they're going to support the local business and help them, giving them the space to put the garden up. And if you want to stop in, they'll be there between 11 and 1 at Power City Eatery. That's on 3rd Street, correct? It's on 3rd Street. 3rd Street. Stop out, check out Power City And they City have Eatery. very good food there. Too. Yeah, they do they have, do good, have food good food. They do have good food. Actually, uh, that's where I went to go meet Vince when I was on the show. We met at Power City Eatery and. I'm surprised not the market side. Vince loved the market side. He wanted to meet me at Power Side because it was something different. And he said I was a little bit younger, so he didn't want me to. Well, he probably didn't want to be seen in public with you, really. Probably. Yeah. That's how it usually works. The market side's always crowded. Plus, he wanted to show me the Tesla mirror, because I kept saying there was no Tesla mirror. So I was You're like, going to have to join us uh, when uh, fall starts up and Matt starts doing the pa- different pancake every week. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember oh, he does that. some killer pancakes. And we got a uh, concert at Gill Creek coming up on Wednesday, correct? I believe, yes. I'm not sure of the schedule, but I think they're going to be doing just about every Wednesday from now through yes. most of August. Well, Zajax the, is, uh, is sponsoring one. Yes. August 4th. Yes. Well, August 4th, doing, David, David Zajac yeah. is going to do what that. What is it, Pine Avenue Business? Niagara Street, Niagara Street yeah, Business yeah, Association. Niagara Street Business Association is doing them for this month, and then I think Pine Avenue Business takes over next month. 
No. I think they were doing them on Thursdays, I'm pretty sure, in August. Well, they may be over All at the, the gazebo, Thursdays. maybe? Yes, the gazebo, correct. The on gazebo Pine on Avenue. 15th and Pine. Right? Yes, they're going to be having theirs as well also in August. I haven't heard theirs, but I bet you they do. They always did before. Yes, I was just told about that today. I received a phone call about it. So There's a good group. They try They try and keep Pine Avenue looking really good. And you got that new restaurant right there beside them, the, the Judas Tree that just opened. I'm sure they're going to be involved in it as well. we got their outside patio there, so... There's going to be plenty of things to do. People need to Should get out of the house. Weekend. All right. Get then. out of your house. Get uh, your mind off that rainstorm. Get your mind off the flood and go out and enjoy the company of your fellow citizens. Speaking of which, and this is a good quote to end it on. This is by Epithic, Ep, Epithis. Okay, Epithis. Ep, Don't quote if you can't say it. It's that. terrible. No, I, I, I said it at the house a bunch of times. <laughs> we cannot choose our external circumstances but we can always choose on how we respond to them. Anything that happened, we can all come together and, and replay the, replace the materialistic things that happened. So we have to learn to work with each other at a government, at a community level. And once we are able to bring them things together, then things will progress in a, may, in a way that is visible to everybody because we're actually doing the work together. Um, thank you for joining us. See you all next week. See you all next Friday and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Oh, my God! They killed Kenny! You bitch!